our morning minute for today. My text today is from 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to read for us verse 9 and 10. He who says that he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loves his brother abides in the light and there is no occasion for stumbling in him. This text, first of all, tells us something about our God that we follow. John, later on in chapter 4, will say that God is love. Love is a essential, a fundamental attribute of God. So God is, is not uh, stoic. God is not uh, impassive. God is love. He has warmth and concern for and passion for his people. And that's something that we can rejoice in, that we preach a God of love in a world filled with hatred. But in John chapter 4, John will also say that we, as his people, are of God. And his point is that if, if God is love, then that love begins to manifest itself in the lives of his people in whom he dwells. Does this mean that a Christian can't struggle with hate? Well, of course a Christian can struggle with hate. He can struggle with pride. He can struggle with sexual deviancy. He can struggle with covetousness. But a Christian cannot rest content in any of those sins. We may struggle with hatred, but we're not content with it. And it's our desire to be free from our hatred and for the sake of our love for Christ, to love that brother or sister in the Lord with whom we are having inner problems. And so God is love. He has called his people to love. Yet his people called to love may still wrestle with something other than love. This text presses us to remind ourselves how desperately we are in the need of the intervening power of God in our life. It is human nature to hate, as our current social and political environment make very clear. Human ugliness is a reality. Human hatefulness is a reality. Human hate desires the destruction of the one who's hated. It desires to see no good, no blessing, no grace be upon them. God's love steps into that scenario of human darkness and teaches us to desire the good and the blessing, even of those that we would consider enemies. That truth is summed up, of course, in the words of our Lord Jesus when he said very simply but so powerfully, love your enemies. Today, let it be our prayer that God's nature, which is love, would more and more infuse our own hearts and our own thoughts. I think especially it's important during this hate-filled time in our nation that the Church of Jesus Christ, by God's power, exemplify the love of God in Christ. It is a wonderful opportunity and, be encouraged, it's a certainty. God's love will manifest itself in radical ways through his people. And let us pray that we personally would be a part of that expression of the love of God to a hate-weary world. Let's pray about Heavenly Father, you have expressed your love most powerfully in the gift of your Son. 
we want to admit to you that we struggle with, with feelings of hatred, that we, if left to ourselves, would call doom down upon our enemies and would rejoice in their destruction. Please forgive us that sometimes our hearts veer off in a direction that is not reflective of you. Even in the Church of Christ, we wrestle at times with hate. Overcome and overpower our hate-darkened hearts and share with us your own loving nature that we may truly be of God and love others like you do. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. In the name of the Lord, let's go out into the world and into our own homes and into the church and express the love of God.